Morning, all. All right, so uh, today, July 19th, we're, I think, 85 days away from the start of the, the regular season. At least we think that's when it's going to start. October 12th is the planned start date, and the schedule will be released by the end of this week. So we'll know exactly uh, what the plan is, and we'll talk about the schedule uh, soon here. Uh, this morning, making news around the hockey world is Luke Prokop, a prospect for the Nashville Predators, who has come out, and he has announced that he's gay. And this... There's the perception of, well, why does he have to tell people that? It's nobody's business. Okay, so we can look at it from the other point of view. How many National Hockey League players talk about their wife, their kids, family? They take pictures on, on Instagram and Twitter and, and post them all over the place of their wife and their kids and, and their home and their family. And for players, and, and we know that there's been National Hockey League players who've been gay. We've I, I remember rumors back in the 80s about who might be and maybe and could be, right? So obviously there's been at least some. But for those players, they couldn't come out and talk about it because um, there's this, this culture around hockey that doesn't really see that as being part of hockey, right? So the idea that, well, we don't want to know, right? But at the same time, you're then telling them that they're, they're off ice, the life they have off ice, their personal life, a big part of who they are, they can't talk about when they'll see all of their teammates talking about it. There's also the case too of, I'm sure there are those who have been gay coming up through hockey who have who got married and, and had kids and, and maybe decided this is, this is how I have to live in order to have my career. So what Luke has done today, and, and there is a bravery to it because of course there's going to be people in the hockey world who publicly embrace it and privately go, well, I don't know if I'd want him on my team. And and that's that's always kind of been part of it too. Um, I, I follow Brock McGillis on uh, on Twitter. Uh, he was the first to, to, to come out. Uh, not, you know, never played in the NHL, but still hockey player that came out. And, and again, the fact that this gets so much press is because there are there's not a lot of this in professional sports. Um, I remember I did a video once uh, where the comments were along the lines of, well, gay people really don't like hockey. And I thought, what are you? I've had gay coworkers that were almost as, or just as into hockey as I was. We have meetups here locally. There's at least one gay person that comes out to those that I know of on our Discord server. There are a lot of people who identify as 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 being gay um there there are hockey fans that i'm friends with who are who are trans so this is this is obviously not something that uh that this isn't a sport that just appeals to 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 people that are that are straight so anyways uh all the best to luke and you know he was a number 73 pick in 2020 third rounder for the nashville predators uh played for the calgary hitman hitman i said hitman hitman uh, 15 games, two goals, four assists, six points. He's a defenseman. He's six foot five, 220 pounds. So the, the NHL level size is there. And we'll see how things go for him from here. All the best to him. And I agree that it'll be nice when it's not news. But when we can see a hockey player saying, hey, here, here, here I am with my boyfriend, and people won't go nuts about it, that's where we're trying to get to. So, gonna take some time. Uh, so, other news of the day. Seattle is still making news. And I have to say that between Washinsky and Valley, they're on it right now. These reporters are absolutely on it. It feels like Frank Valley just has, like, probably... I, I picture him having, like, 25 burner phones. And just every GM is on a different phone. And he has all this information that nobody else has. And it feels like that's happened since he left TSN. It feels like there's even more than it used to be. Because a lot of this is being driven by him, starting with Seattle. So this whole carry price thing is really, really fascinating, isn't it? So, you know, we're going to expose Jake Allen. Oh, they're going to take Jake Allen. All right, well, carry price waived. We're going to expose price. Uh, price is injured, though, meaning kind of like you don't want him. And Seattle is considering taking him. And ownership apparently signed off on it. So here's the thing, that huge cash bonus... If owners say, I'll pay that, sure, then it's it's done. It's it's done. As long as owners are on 
on board with it, then it's done. So what they're considering is, even with the health problems that are being reported, that they will take care, that they're considering taking Carey Price, that it's it's still there. And what Wyshynski's reporting, on top of Frank's reporting, Frank's reporting is that they're, they're really giving it some thought. I'm sure they're doing uh, expand like expansion drafts constantly right now trying to figure out how to make the money work and what they're going to do to have because if price is going to be out for a while you just draft three goalies you have two NHL level goalies until price is ready to come back and then you can trade one of the three goalies right uh, but while you know that's out there the idea of of having carry price for marketing reasons makes a lot of sense you want to have that face of the franchise like Flurry was for Vegas, where Mark Andre Flurry was kind of a big name. Carey Price, kind of a big name, and people make the comparisons. Well, you know, Flurry has these cup rings, and Carey Price doesn't. And well, you know, and they, it doesn't. It's the name. It's the name value, the name recognition. Even if you put Carey Price in a situation where he's he split and starts fifty fifty with somebody else, even if we say, okay, well, Carey Price isn't going to be fantastic. He's still he's a name. They can market him. And if owners are saying, yeah, we'll pay that contract, that's fine, that's good, whatever, then that's it. And so, yeah, we'll see what happens, but things are are interesting. And speaking of interesting, uh, the Oilers keeping things interesting. Now it's out there that Adam Larson's not come to a contract agreement at all with Edmonton, and he's likely going to market. And so I'm wondering how much Larson's looking for. Larson is a pure defensive defenseman. The The offensive side of it, which I think GMs thought was going to be there, scouts thought was going to be there before he was drafted, it just hasn't shown up. So for Larson, uh, if he leaves, there's going to be some interest. I do wonder how much money he'll make as a pure defensive defenseman. Uh, but now this means that they've circled back on Tyson Berry, and Berry looks like he's probably going to stay. So... That would be remarkable, wouldn't it, if Tyson Berry stays and Adam Larson goes to market instead. And there might be more of a market for Larson as the pure defensive defenseman than for Tyson Berry, who got a ton of points this year. But of course, that's going to be seen as, well, he was playing with Dreisaitl and McDavid. And I, I, I can't find fault with that. He's the only defenseman, I think they said he's the only defenseman that's ever led the league in scoring uh, overall that didn't get a single vote for the Norris. That's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, it shouldn't be. The points shouldn't be used to decide who your best defenseman is, but very often it's been at least part of the conversation. Um, and also, Saravelli reporting that there's been interest in Zach Cassian, and there may very well be some, some kind of a trade that goes down on Thursday when the trade freeze is over. And of course, coming back to the Seattle equation is, so does Ron Francis then take Cassian because he can trade him? There's going to be players that get taken. Uh, there's talk about whether or not they take Tarasenko and then move him. They have no interest in keeping Tarasenko, but they know there's interest in him around the league, so they can take him and then trade him. Uh, that, that that could absolutely happen. So when we see the, this team get revealed in a couple of days, that's probably not going to be how things end up. We're probably not going to see a situation where, you know, these 30 guys that get brought out there are still members of the Seattle organization a week down the road. <clears throat> there are going to be a few of them that get traded right away. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, those phones are, are definitely getting used right now. Uh, Frank, keep those burners handy. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the schedule is supposed to be released later this week, and Wyshynski's reporting that he's heard that uh, it's going to have the Olympic break in it. So, and that would be interesting because we have not got an agreement yet between the NHL, NHLPA, and the IOC about how going to the Olympics is going to work. And yet, apparently, it's going to be baked into the schedule. So, wouldn't it be interesting if they don't come to an agreement and then we just have two weeks off? All right, guys, well, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, what the Olympic break does is it means that it's, it's going to condense the schedule yet again. So, players are going to probably getting a little more banged up we're going to see some three games and four nights more often than we normally would because there's two weeks of the schedule that will be blocked off <clears throat> and of course there are other concerns with this too uh will there be a quarantine to enter uh the olympics will there be a quarantine coming out like stuff the nhl doesn't have control over that clearly the nhl nhlpa and the ioc are going to try to you know work on and, and figure out the details but that's the plan so they're going to release that this week. I don't know if there's, I mean, I know there's two different schedules they've worked on. I don't know if there's a chance that 
um, they're not able to come to an agreement and then they go okay sorry this is the this is the the other schedule we're going to go with this one where there is no olympic break but the one they're supposed to release this week is supposed to have the break baked in so we'll see how that looks and of course we'll go over that as well and uh, see what the key dates are and when old rivalries get rekindled and when rivalries from this past season that are dying off when we might see them get rekindled as well uh teams that played each other eight times this year uh, now only playing each other twice next year as an example. But all right, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.